Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to worship. Some of you may recognize where I am today. I'm in the Bluebell Woods, and hopefully you can see some of those lovely bluebells behind me. Psalm 104 says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. As long as I live, I will sing praises to God. May he be pleased with my song, for my gladness comes from him. And our first hymn today reflects that desire to praise God in every season and circumstance of life. So let's join in that as we worship God together. now will you join me in prayer let's pray our Heavenly Father we come before you in worship today thanking you and that we can lift up your name in praise our desire is not only to praise you with our voices but to praise you for all you are with all we are to rejoice in you and in your love to bring glory to you, not only in our songs, but in our fellowship with you. Help us to see ourselves and all of our life as sacred and dedicated to you. We praise you for Jesus and for our life in him and with him. And we thank you that in Jesus we have been made alive and that in him we get to know you and enjoy you. Thank you that we get to walk with you. Thank you for the intimacy we get to have with you. And we praise you for the wonder that we have of being able to call you Father, knowing that you love us as your children. Thank you that there is never a moment when you are not present with us. Uh, Father, we admit that we don't always give you the time the attention you deserve. We settle for lesser things, even when we know you desire us to have a personal, close relationship with you. Forgive us and deepen our love for you. Help us to be more aware of your constant presence in our lives. As we draw near to you through worship, through 
reading your word and through prayer. We ask that you would fill our lives with praise and that we would respond to your presence and goodness with thanksgiving and that your name would receive great glory. These things we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Our Bible reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Let me tell you how hard I have worked for you and for the people in Laodicea and for all others who do not know me personally. I do this in order that they may be filled with courage and may be drawn together in love and so have the full wealth of assurance which true understanding brings. In this way, they will know God's secret, which is Christ himself. He is the key that opens all the hidden treasures of God's wisdom and knowledge. I tell you then, do not let anyone deceive you with false arguments, no matter how good they seem to be. For even though I am absent in body, Yet I am with you in spirit, and I am glad as I see the resolute firmness with which you stand together in your faith in Christ. Since you have accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, live in union with him. Keep your roots deep in him, build your lives on him, and become stronger in your faith as you were taught, and be filled with thanksgiving. Amen. See
Since you have accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, live in union with him. I like the English Standard Version of that passage which says, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. I really love this image of walking in Jesus. But how do you walk in Jesus? I mean, to walk with someone, you have to be going to the same place, you have to be taking the same path, and of course you have to be moving at the same speed. So walking in Jesus would mean submitting our lives to him, valuing what he values, and doing the things that he does. To walk with Jesus is being in his company, experiencing his companionship and enjoying an intimacy and a closeness with Jesus that is distinctive of our life with him. Jai B. Phillips in his translation of this verse says, just as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so go on living in him, in simple faith. Grow out of him as a plant goes out of the soil it is planted in, becoming more and more sure of the faith as you were taught it, and your lives will overflow with love and thankfulness. So today I want to suggest three things that come out of that verse that will help us to walk in and with Jesus. Number one, firstly, keep your roots deep in him. Or as J.B. Phillips puts it, grow out of him as a plant grows out of the soil it is planted in. Prayer is the primary way we place our roots deep in our relationship with Jesus. And it's a picture really of, of a plant growing through the nourishment supplied by the soil. The soil, of course, being our relationship with Jesus himself. And prayer has to be a priority in our life, doesn't it? It keeps us connected to God. And we can't grow as God wants us to if we don't have a good prayer life. Uh, we can do so many things in the space of a day. And we know how easy it is to, be, to fill our days with activity and yet neglect prayer. Well, if we want to grow in our relationship with God and with Jesus, then we have to pray. Prayer is the most important activity in our life. And yet, if we're honest, many of us struggle with prayer. Well, you know, when we struggle, we can ask Jesus to help us. One day, after Jesus had finished praying, his disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And he did. Uh, the truth is that we need to make space in our lives to pray. We can pray as we go through our day, and we should do that. But if we want our relationship with Jesus to grow, and we want our lives to grow, out of our relationship with him, then we need to give ourselves space, time in our day for prayer. God encourages us to seek him in prayer and to do so wholeheartedly. God says in Jeremiah chapter 29, 
then you will call to me. You will come and pray to me, and I will answer you. You will seek me, and you will find me, because you seek me with all your heart. When we call to him and pray to him, God answers. And when we seek him with all our heart, God reveals himself to us. I mean, imagine if I only wanted to spend time with my wife once a week or a couple of days in a month and we only spoke now and then, how long do you think we would have been married? Um, not as long as we have been, I can tell you. And what kind of marriage would it be? You know, even after 40 years of marriage, uh, with three children all still living at home, we still make space to be together and talk. We make space for one another. It's important to us and it builds intimacy, builds relationship. Prayer builds intimacy and relationship with God. An intimate relationship with God means you talk together. God listens to you, you listen to him. Secondly, build your lives on him. Or as J.B. Phillips says, grow out of him. As a plant grows out of the soil it is planted in. Now, naturally, we physically get nourishment from the food we eat. Uh, food that helps us to grow and to mature. Well, spiritually, God's word is the food that nourishes the soul and provides us with the sustenance that we need to grow and mature as believers in Christ. Uh, quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, Jesus says, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Well, I don't think you can get much clearer than that, can you? The prophet Jeremiah said that when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. Well, Jeremiah didn't physically eat God's word. But what he's saying is he allowed it to feed his spirit, his soul. God's words tasted so good to him. They were, he says, my joy and my heart's delight. In Isaiah 55 verse 2, the Lord says, listen, Listen to me and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. And Psalm 119 says that when we read his word, it's like honey to our taste. You know, when I, remember when I was a student, I thought I would give my wife a treat one day by cooking dinner. Um, so when she came home, from work, I, I said to her that to go away to, you know, have a bath, whatever, and, and relax for a while as I was cooking dinner that night. Well, I had a, a spicy uh, kind of chili chicken dish that had as one of the ingredients uh, natural yogurt. I went to the local sh shop at that time and not finding any natural yogurt there, I bought the only yogurt, would you believe, that was on the shelf which happened to be fruits of the forest, reckoning that yogurt was yogurt. Yeah, well, here we are, we're sitting at the table and we, we take a taste of the dinner. And as I'm eating it, I thought, oh, yuck, that's ah, awful. Oh. And as I watched Elspeth, bless her, she hadn't said a word. I watched her raise her second forkful to her mouth. And I said, stop, stop, you can't eat that. At which point she burst out laughing and asked, what on earth? Have you put in it? <laughs> well, of course, I, I hadn't followed the recipe. Uh, I thought I could get away with uh, something different, something else, like a yogurt that wasn't meant to be in it. And it was awful. It was terrible. We build our lives on Jesus. We grow out of him as we read our Bible, as we meditate and think about what it says, and as we ask God to speak to us from it, 
to teach us from it, to speak to our heart from it. We listen to what God is saying to us through his word. We're not listening to the voice of others around us. We're not listening to human wisdom or human opinions or viewpoints. We are listening to hear from God. Our focus is on him and we follow his recipe, his instructions. We obey and put into practice his word. You want to have healthy spiritual growth? John prayed to his friend Gaius that he may be in good health, as I know you are well in spirit. And that reminds us really that the spirit can be healthy or ill, just as the body can be healthy or ill. How do we maintain our spiritual health? Well, the Apostle Peter points us to healthy growth as he instructs us to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. As God's truth fills the inner places of our lives, we learn to live and we get to live a healthy, balanced life. So let me ask, do you have space in your life when you and God are alone by yourself? And you've opened his word and you are reading and you are asking God to speak to your heart from it. And, and you're praying through as, you, as you're reading. When do you and God have some private time together? Thirdly, from this verse, become stronger in your faith as you were taught or as Phillips puts it, becoming more and more sure of the faith as you were taught it. Um, we exercise our faith as we live it out day by day. Jesus spent time in prayer. He spent time in the company of the Father. Um, he recited and, and read God's word. But then he went out to be among people, teaching and bringing healing to them. You, know, you, you build muscle by exercising it. You build faith by exercising faith. Uh, we do this by trusting him with all things and trusting him in all things. And in this way, we build confidence in him, in his faithfulness, in his purposes and in his provision. You know, when Jesus sent out his 12 disciples with the instructions to tell others uh, that they needed to turn from their sins, that they were to cast out demons and they were to heal people, I'm sure that those disciples went out with a fair bit of fear and trembling, that they didn't go out full of confidence. But when they returned and told Jesus all they had done and taught, I'm equally certain that as they shared their experiences, they did so with a lot of energy and liveliness. Why? Because they had exercised and they had grown in their faith. They had gone beyond the limits of human power and wisdom and strength, and they had stepped out in God's power and wisdom and strength. They became stronger and more sure of their faith because they trusted Jesus and they obeyed Jesus. When we make prayer and reading the Bible and exercising our faith in Jesus a priority in our lives, the result, as J.B. Phillips puts it, is that your lives will overflow with joy and thankfulness. So may we all learn to do that in our lives, to put our roots deep in Christ, to build our lives on him and to exercise our faith that we might know joy and gladness and the contentment of our spirit and soul and heart and life as we walk in step with Jesus. God bless you. See
We bring now our prayers for others. Let us pray. Creator of all good things, you made the rolling hills and painted the endless sky. You hold in your hands the depths of the ocean and the expanse of the universe. Yet you still have time for each of us. You tend to the needs of your children. You listen to our whispers and to our cries. You know our voices and we thank you that we can know yours too. God of all, you have called us to follow you. You have called us to care for your world and for your people. You have called us to be a blessing, not a curse. When we look at our homes, our communities, and at the world around us, we see signs of blessing, but we also see the need for love and care. As we think of all the different families that make up our community of faith, we remember those who are not with us today, and those who need to know you are close at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We think of our community and all the different activities that take place in and around it. All the people who have grown up here or moved here in recent times. We remember all those who live and work here, who learn and play here, who love and care here. We bring them all before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We think of our country and all of the different decisions being made in parliaments and councils. We think of communities facing many different challenges. God, we pray for healing, for fullness of life, and for your way of love to be the guiding rule. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we think of the world that you loved so much, that you gave your only son for, and as we continue in our daily round of tasks and activities, we pray for your guidance. Help us to be aware of the impact we are having on the planet, on the situations that we meet, and in the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful God, Help us to care for and to love all born in your image. Inspire us to speak out truth to power and healing to division. And may we be a blessing to all whom we encounter and humbly receive blessing from those who encounter us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers.
I've had to battle the crows and so on in the trees, but thank you for joining us today. Uh, and just as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Grow out of him as a plant grows out of the soil it is planted in, becoming more and more sure of your faith. If you do this, your lives will overflow with joy and thankfulness. And the mercy of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit will surround you and uphold you wherever you are and wherever you go. Go in God's peace. Amen. <laughs>